Silent Hill F is a 2025 title built on Unreal Engine 5, and these are the game's minimum system requirements. So today, in this video, I'll be showing you how to squeeze the absolute best performance out of this game on low-end machines. But before we dive in, let me quickly mention that this video is sponsored by Xmod. If you've played Silent Hill F, you already know how terrifying it can get. The world is twisted, the atmosphere is suffocating, and every step forward feels like you're sinking deeper into a nightmare. One wrong move, and you're overwhelmed by horrors you can't even comprehend. That's exactly where I was. Until I discovered Xmod. Xmod is a completely free tool that supports over 5,000 PC games. From cult classics to the latest releases, think of it as your ultimate survival partner. Packed with cheats, trainers, FPS boosters, stutter fixes, and mods, all in one place. For Silent Hill F, all I had to do was type the game's name in the app, and instantly I had access to a full library of trainers. Invincibility, infinite health, infinite stamina, no enemy attacks, unlimited items, and so much more. And the best part? These trainers are updated for every patch, so they always work. No frustration, no downtime, but it doesn't stop there. Xmod also comes with an FPS Graphics Pro tool, a built-in mod hub, where you can install tons of mods with just one click and many more features you wouldn't believe. And yes, it runs perfectly on the Steam Deck. Let me show you. My game is running in the background right now, and I've activated just one trainer, Invincibility. By the way, you can also turn trainers on and off instantly with hotkeys. Suddenly, I'm no longer afraid of every encounter. The monsters can't touch me, my stamina never drains, and exploring Silent Hill becomes a completely new experience. So, if you're tired of struggling and want to take full control of Silent Hill F, download Xmod right now. Use my exclusive link in the description and pinned comment to grab it. Trust me, you'll never play Silent Hill the same way again. And now, let's get back to the video. So first, I've set the resolution to 1080p, but the downside is that you can't change the in-game resolution if the display mode is set to full screen. The frame rate limit is set to no limit, V-Sync is disabled, and every other graphics effect and setting is at its lowest. The screen percentage option doesn't work if you have upscaling enabled. So if you're using DLSS or FSR, that slider won't do anything. For anti-aliasing, I've chosen DLSS with the quality set to performance mode. If you switch to FXAA or TAA instead, you'll be able to use the game's standard resolution scaler. But for now, I'm sticking with DLSS. So with these settings applied, let's now test the in-game performance. Honestly, the game is already pretty smooth and I'm getting really good FPS right now, but let's see what happens if we switch the anti-aliasing from DLSS to FSR. I've kept everything else the same, and after testing, it's clear that both DLSS and FSR give solid performance and higher FPS. Which one you pick really comes down to your hardware and what feels best to you. Both work great. All right, with that out of the way, let's quit the game for now and dive into some deeper tweaks to push the performance even further. The configuration file for Silent Hill F can be found in your hidden app data folder under Local, SHF folder, Saved, Config, and then into the Windows folder. And now open this file with Notepad. And here you can tweak a few settings to boost performance. For example, set the graphical preset values to zero. You can also change the in-game resolution here, though it won't take effect in full screen mode. So I'll leave that part as it is. Once done, save the file and set its attributes to read only. For deeper tweaking, create a new text document in the same folder after creating open it and paste in the variables I've provided in the video description, I won't go into detail about each one since that would take too long, but everything you need is listed below. After adding them, save the file as engine.ini, set it to read only, and then jump back into the game to test the results. After applying those tweaks, you can see we've got a solid FPS boost, but there's now a problem with extremely low draw distance. To fix that, just open the engine file again Raise the values of the draw distance variables to something like 0.5, save the file, set it to read only, and the issue is gone while FPS stays high. But don't go anywhere, I've got more tricks. One missing feature in this game is frame generation, which basically creates extra frames between real ones to make gameplay smoother and boost FPS. Enabling it is simple, open the engine file, add the frame generation variable, save, lock it to read only, and test it. And there's the magic. The FPS nearly doubles, and the game feels buttery smooth. Still, if you want to push performance even further, you can enable Potato Graphics Mode. 
Just open the engine file one last time, add the variables listed in the description, save, set to read only, and check the results. The visuals will look very stripped down, but the FPS improvement is real. At the end of the day, it's up to you if you want to play Bald Hill F, sorry, I mean Silent Hill F, like this, but at least now it runs on low-end PCs. So, well guys, that's it for today's video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your low-spec friends so they can enjoy the game too. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care and bye. Everyone. What about Chizuruya? Maybe you'll find.